walk in, there'll be just one or two, amen, and it's almost as if it's a test. Are you going to believe this thing? Are you going to preach this thing? Are you limited to a thousand people before you can preach as the oracles of God and speak on God's behalf, amen? Uh, there'll be a time of testing in every believer's life. I believe that with all of my heart, amen, and so I don't want us to misinterpret that this morning. I want you to understand that, but yet there needs to be a moving beyond in our hearts. There needs to be a moving beyond in our thinking. There needs to be a moving beyond in everything that we see around us. As we look at this world, we are to understand that God's going to burn it down one day. I didn't write that. I didn't say that. I just repeated what the Word of God said. For it says the heavens and earth are going to pass away with a great noise. But my hope is not in this earth. I wouldn't have it if it was given to me. It's got a curse on it. I'll prove that to you. We've got a paved parking lot out here. And grass grows up through the, uh, the cracks in the, carpet, uh, the parking lot. And we're all the time having to deal with that but yet uh, wheat will die in a plowed field. I'm telling you this earth it's got a curse on it but I'm looking for what Peter said a new earth where that God's going to create a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Amen. That's where my hope is and that's totally beyond this world and it's beyond everything of it. If a man goes through this whole life and he never gets beyond his own self how miserable of a man is he? I said how miserable of a man when you never get beyond yourself and your whole life Life is all about you. Most of the problems in marriages and most of the problems that we see throughout the world and even in the church is selfishness. I want to say that again. It's selfishness and the devil will do everything that he can to make it all about you and you alone and get you thinking on a pity party sitting in a cave over there like he tried to get Elijah sitting over there and it took the hand of God to speak to him and roust him out of that cage and get back to the Father's business. Amen. Yes, there is that element of this thing too but you've got to get beyond yourself. Two Sunday nights ago, a gentleman made a statement two rows back on the front of this pew and it changed my life. Amen. It changed everything and I caught a vision of something. We had preached that night on going to heaven and the glory and the beauty of it and what it was going to be like to see Jesus and the glory of heaven because Jesus was there. And he made this statement. He said, you know, the one thing that I'm so longing for, the one thing that I'm so excited about going to heaven, he said, is it's not going to be about me any longer. Amen. Man. In other words, this fight that I've got in this flesh, making it always about me, the fight through the emotions and the fight through the letdowns of life, amen. You've got to get a hold of something that won't let you down, friends. I've been let down by the best of them, and no doubt I've, I've let folks down my own self, and if you get me under a magnifying glass this morning, I'll let you down. You'll find some cobwebs, amen. But if you get your eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, if you get your heart and your affections and your hope upon Jesus Christ, Christ, amen. He's never let nobody down, amen. He's not going to start today, amen. It's impossible for the Lord Jesus Christ to let anyone down, amen. If He's got a hold of you, friends, He's going to carry you through. You must move beyond the present, amen. amen. I said we must move beyond the present. We must move beyond where we are, amen, in our life. We must become dissatisfied as we look around us and say, my Lord, you know those men, I've thought about this, you and I have got no excuse, and this keeps coming back to my mind and my heart, but we preach today in the United States of America. We preach under that flag right there, amen. You know why we're able to stand here this morning and preach the uncompromising Word of God? It's because men and women sacrifice the present for this future that we've got today. It's because the soldiers walked up through Valley Forge in the snow with no shoes on, amen, and the Continental Army done what they did to give us our independence, amen, and that's went on through the years as people have declared war upon us, and we've had to go across the waters and deal with that in America, the war machine that come together, amen, and it began to produce and it began to fight, and everybody sacrificed so that you and I can stand here today, amen, and preach this uncompromising Word of God. What I'm trying to get you to see that if you and I don't move beyond the very present, if we don't move beyond, amen, where we sit today, where is that going to leave our children tomorrow, amen? I said, where is that going to leave our children, amen, next year? Where is that going to leave our grandchildren right here in a few years if we don't begin to sacrifice and move beyond ourselves and move to a womb of prayer? I'm not going to stand here and tell you that we're going to see a great revival in our time, but my Lord and my God, we ought to be seeking God 
God for it. We ought to be laying down on our deathbed knowing, amen, that we help this kingdom of God usher in another generation or to touch a few little lost souls, amen, that become born again and make them pregnant, amen, with the, with the grace and the mercy of God for a whole other generation, amen. We ought to, amen, be pressing into this thing. We ought to move beyond ourselves and everything that we know, amen, as we see it out here in the world and as we look is a dark, dim world, amen. Can I tell you, amen, that God's always done His best work with nothing. Absolutely nothing, amen. And as I move in this world and look at it, David, it's getting darker and darker and darker. But can I tell you that a light bulb will always do its best work in the pitch black dark. If you don't believe me, walk into any dark room and turn the light on and see what happens, amen. Now I'm not telling you, amen, that God's going to cause arms to grow, amen, and bring the revivals back that we've seen through the 50s. But I am telling you, amen, that as I study through the revival times of history, and one thing that history tells me over and over, over and over among the studies what little I've done is that every move of God, amen, every man, woman of God that God ever used, it was birthed out of a womb of prayer, amen. And if you and I are not willing to sacrifice the present, I submit to you that there may not even be a future, amen. All along this line, down through the dawnings of time, there's always been a connection all the way back to Pentecost in the book of Acts. There's always been somebody that got pregnant with the move of God, amen. They carried that, amen. And they birthed that, amen. Maybe they didn't birth it in that generation, but nonetheless, they carried it. They wept over it. They carried the burden, amen. And they looked beyond themselves and looked beyond the time, amen. And looked beyond their own troubles and trials and everything they were going through. And they carried that main line from Pentecost, amen. And they carried that thing on, amen, to that next generation. I'm asking you today, who's going to carry the torch, amen, from yesterday? Wigglesworth is dead, amen. A.A. A. Allen is gone. Paul's dead. Who's going to grab this thing up and become pregnant, amen, with the move of God down deep in their souls and to see God maybe in the next generation? You've got to understand. You've got to move beyond yourself, amen. It may not be for you to see that move of God in your life, but you've got to move beyond yourself and understand that you're part of a kingdom, amen. When I came to this church, amen, I walked in here and I simply entered into Brother Ray's labors. 20, 21 years he'd been here in this church. He came and entered into Junior's labors, amen. You see, nobody gets a big feather in their hat for nothing. It's God's plan. We've all did a small piece of the puzzle, amen. But I just entered into the foundation that Papa Ray built, and I've been preaching on that and trying to add to it. And no doubt, whenever this thing is over for me and it's time for me to move on, God's already got somebody else He's bringing up, amen. And they're going to come in here. They may drag my dead corpse out of here and bury my body, but God will have another man that will come in here, amen. Man, it's part of the same plan and God gets the glory. Amen. We're moving closer and closer to a move of God. We're moving closer and closer to a great awakening. I believe with all of my heart, but somebody needs to get pregnant with the move of God. Somebody needs to get, amen, pregnant with the move of God and carry that, amen. I've watched my wife carry three children. It wasn't no easy task, amen. That burden that she laid there, amen, on a Zofran pump wrapped around her neck. Uh, I've watched her lay there and eat cherry one by one, amen, just to keep trying her best not to throw up just to get through. It was a hard thing for nine months to carry that, but I want you to know something, amen, that if you ever do get pregnant, I promise you, you will birth, amen. It may be life or it may be death, but you're going to birth, amen. But nobody wants to carry the baby, amen. Nobody wants to go through those nine months of pain. Nobody wants to go through that, amen. Everybody's interested in nothing but a honeymoon, amen, but nobody wants to get pregnant, amen and carry the child, praise God. I want to carry that thing on Monday night whenever I come in here and bow my knees. God, I need your help, amen. Lord, if you don't move, amen, we're going to lose it all, it seems. The church is depleting. I've seen so much through this pandemic has went out with the tide, amen, and it didn't come back. So much of what I thought was the reality of the church, I got fooled, Brother David. I realized that the church, amen, wasn't in revival like I thought it was. I remember those days they come 
to me and said, we don't have no more parking out here. I don't know where we're going to park them. This was right before the pandemic. We moved to start the parking lot over there and done all that grading. Over a thousand tandem loads of dirt was hauled out of that thing over there to get this parking lot ready. Amen. I remember we shut down for a little season. We kind of got realized, understand what the devil was doing. Vowed I'd never do that again. Amen. Got back in the pulpit. I just knew the church would be overrun with people. Guess what? Nobody showed up. Amen. You want to know what happened? Amen. I said the tide rolled in, praise God, and it rolled out. And whenever it rolled out, we looked around and we decided we didn't have near as many standing with us as we thought we did. Amen. But I want you to know something. There may not be but a few of us that's going to stand. There may not be but a few of us that's going to carry. Amen. And be pregnant with the move of God. But I want you to know that's all it takes. Amen. It only took one Hannah. I said it only took one Hannah getting down on her knees and seeking God's face and that long and give me a child and I'll give him to you, Lord. It only took that one to produce a man like Samuel that ruled over what he did. Amen. Go and read about Samuel. First Samuel, second Samuel, how he was president all through the two kings there. How about you? Are you willing to get pregnant with the move of God in your heart? Are you ready to move beyond? You see, if this is never preached, we'll never reach for it. If it's never preached, we'll not even know it's possible. we we'll just keep going. This dead religion, I'm so sick of it. I want to puke whenever I listen to most of what I hear, amen. It's all about you and it's all about the now. It's all about a better life and thinking positive thoughts and all about glorifying your flesh and building yourself up, amen. But what about the kingdom of God, amen? You're going to arrive, amen, right on time. It's appointed and a man wants to die. And after this, the judgment, you will stand before God Almighty and if you don't know now you'll know then that this whole thing has been about the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You pick up this Bible and look through that Old Testament oh, you, you, you'll come to the realization very quick if you know anything about the New Testament and you're a born again child of God you'll understand that every scripture in that Old Testament amen is a reference to the Lord Jesus Christ. This book right here has been about Him from the beginning. It'll be about Him in the end. It started with Him over there amen as they spoke this world into existence amen and it'll because He is the Word of God and it ends with Him amen a rule and it ends with Him in glory praise God. Have you ever got a hold of that and caught that vision? Whenever you see that it'll cause you to move beyond yourself and beyond the elements amen and beyond the mind beyond all the troubles beyond all the trials. Do you understand what it was that caused the apostles so Paul, they said that legend said that when they let him out, we read his, what he wrote to Timothy there as he said, Timothy, he said, I'm fixing to die. They're about to cut my head off. He said, I'm fixing to be offered. The time of my departure is at hand, Timothy. I'm about to leave here. I finished my course with joy, amen. And legend said that when they led that man out there and he ran to the corner and he saw the execution block, that he ran to it and laid his head down. I've got it on good authority but before there's one drop of blood come off of that head of that axe and his head rolled off of that stump, he was in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. What is it that caused a man that had been stoned and left for dead to get up and go back and preach that gospel again? Because he moved beyond himself. It wasn't about Paul no more. It was about what God wanted to do. Amen. And Paul wrote himself, he said, for I reckon in the book of Romans, he said, for I reckon the sufferings of this life is not even worthy to be compared with the glory that's going to be revealed in us. He moved beyond himself. He moved beyond the now. Amen. That's the problem with most silly preachers in the time that we live. It's all about them. It's all about numbers. It's all about this. It's all about that. It's getting people here, making sure everybody likes them. I offend nothing but the devil. There's only one here today that I'm interested in pleasing, and that's my father. Amen. Amen. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to answer to Him one day, amen. Because if He don't do nothing, ain't nothing going to get done. I've made it my life's heart. I've made it my life's purpose, amen, to find out what the will of God is. I may never find it out for sure. I may never see it fully. But bless God, I've made it my business, amen, to try my best to get pregnant with it, amen. And press in, praise God. And tell God every day of my life, Lord, I need you. I need you to lead me, Lord. If you leave me alone, I'll go to the ditch, amen. 
One of the greatest fears of my life, amen, is God not leading this pulpit and we get 20 years into this thing and decide we've missed it and went the wrong direction. I wonder, amen, is there somebody here, amen, that feels a stirring down deep in your heart, amen. I know it's not for everybody. It may not be but for one or two, but if I could just get a hold of one person this morning and make them pregnant, praise God, with the Spirit of God and make them pregnant that maybe, just maybe, that one day they'll birth that they'll press in and get a hold of this that's not preached. In 1 John, I want to read a little bit more scripture. I said I was going to try to read more scripture this morning. I better do it. Amen. Uh, we need the Word of God. In little John, go to Revelation, turn left, past Jude, and stop at 1 John. 1 John chapter 2. We've read this a lot, but I, it goes along with what we're talking about. First John chapter 2. I'll give you just a moment to get there. First John chapter 2 and verse 15. I just told you that Jesus said we're not of the world. That world hated him. It's going to hate us. Have you noticed, amen, how friendly sometimes the world and the church seems to be? I, I, I'm just talking about what I've read this morning right here. Amen. Amen. You must be born again. Amen. Chapter 1, verse 15. says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Say, not in him. Amen. For all that is in the world, this sums the whole thing up for me. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. I want to do the will of God. Amen. I, I, I need the Holy Ghost of God to continually redirect my focus, redirect my heart, redirect my mind, my will, my emotions, and everything to that finished work. Amen. I need to be re re redirected to the Lord Jesus Christ every day of my life. As one old preacher said, he said, Lord, he said, it's me again this morning. I'm asking you, God, to put a titanium leash around my neck and yank it a few times today. Amen. Are you willing to move beyond your Amen. Are you willing to find yourself a prayer meeting? Find yourself a prayer time and say, Lord, I need some help. Amen. God, I need to press in. Lord, I need to touch the hem of that garment. My children need it. My home needs it. My family need it. My, my spouse and I, we need it. If we don't touch us, God, we're not going to be touched. Amen. Have you ever got pregnant, amen, with the idea that if God don't do it, it's not going to get done? That, friends, in itself will cause you to labor before the Lord. Amen. And we find scripture after scripture. We would read it this morning and we studied it this morning. Amen. How that one man sought God over there and told him, said, I'm not going to turn you loose until you bless me. Amen. Have you ever got pregnant? Amen. With that, knowing that everything is lost. They no hope for my brothers. They no hope for this. I've messed up my whole life. The only hope that I've got is to get a hold of him. Amen. And when he shows up, I'm going to latch on to him with every ounce of my being. Amen. Amen. I'm going to spend this life looking for him. I'm going to make it my business, amen, to pray and to seek his face every day of my life, amen. I may not see it in this life, amen, but I read about a whole bunch of people, amen, that died before they'd ever seen the promise, amen. But because of what they did, amen, you and I are able to stand here today. Hallelujah. They realized one thing, it wasn't about them, it was a kingdom. I said it wasn't about them, it was a kingdom. I read about where a rich man over there had a plenty, and God told him, said, get up and get out of here, and he didn't know where he was going. I'm going to try to get to him and read to about him here just in a minute. Amen. I've established the fact we're not the love of the world. Amen. Go back with me to Luke, the ninth chapter. I'm going to read two more places, then I'm going to run to Hebrews for just a moment. Amen. Oh, mercy, we're out of time already. Luke, chapter 9. I want to read you a few things of what Jesus said. Amen. And Luke chapter 9, verse 23. And he said to them all. Don't you just love the word of God? He spoke to all of them. 
And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Amen. How long it been since we heard any good hot message about denying yourself? Amen. Don't hear that no more. Turn your television on. You hear any of that? No, it's all send me, a, uh, send me $50. God will send you 1000 I like what Shambach told him. He said, Boys, you've got this wrong. Why don't you send me the $50 and let God send you the 1000 It's because it don't work that way and they know it. All they want is your $50. Shame on them. I said shame on them. Amen. They've moved in this thing for filthy lucre. That's all. They've made merchandise out of God's people. Amen. That's all they do. They're not concerned about the spiritual side of things. They're not concerned about the next generation coming before us. And they're certainly not caring anything about making that connection back to Pentecost and keeping that thing alive and pregnant and birth a move of God in any time soon. It's all about them. Need a little more jet fuel. Amen. I got to get off of that. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross every once in a while on a Monday night. No. He says, if any man will deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Daily. Paul says, I die daily. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Now, now, now listen to me just for a moment before I read the rest of this. There is an indication in Scripture that we call reverse logic. If you'll just figure out whatever your carnal mind would like to do and turn around and go the other direction, nine times out of ten, you'll find the will of God, amen, because it's not to be entered into the heart of man, amen. It's never, you'll never understand Him through this mind, amen. It'll be by faith and by the Holy Ghost of God, period, amen. But here's what he says some more, the reverse logic. He says that if you humble yourself, God will raise you up. You know that scripture? And he says, if you raise yourself up, said God's going to humble you. In other words, if you want to go up, you got to go down. Amen. That's reverse logic. It don't seem, but that's the way it worked in the scripture all the way through. And here's another one of those points. He says, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Make it all about yourself. Never turn it loose. He says, you're going to lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. You've never found life until you've given it up. And let him live through you. You, 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 you talk about a joyous reunion whenever we uh, gather on that shore over there. And we realize, you, you, you know, that little pathetic preacher, he was right. This thing was all about Jesus. And God had a will. God had a plan. God was working that thing out all along. And I'm so happy today. I just got to be a little part of it. Amen. I'm so happy like they do the Olympic torch there. Every once in a while, somebody picks it up and runs it. And they keep that thing going. You'll be so glad to have been able to pick that thing up and just run it for a few miles for the glory of God in that day. Amen. I, I'm telling you what, the worst thing you've ever been through in all of your life will not compare to the glory that's going to be revealed in us to be a part of this kingdom and be a part, amen, of what God's doing in the time that we live. Amen. Amen. For whosoever will save his life will lose it, but whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man advantaged if he gain this whole world and lose himself or be cast away? For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words... Of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he has come into his own glory in the Father and his holy angels. Ain't that good preaching? Amen. Flip over verse 57. That's page 1604 if you got one of the Bibles I've got. Verse 57. And it came to pass that as they went in the way that a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee wheresoever thou goest. Now right here, somebody had to cast the demon of poverty out of Jesus nowadays. Well, this foolish they got going on. Yes, sir. You say they got the richest thing mixed up anymore. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath nowhere to lay his head. His kingdom was not of this world. And yours ain't neither if you belong to him. And he said unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and to bury my father. And Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. And another said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid farewell. For they are at home at my house. And Jesus said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. No man. He said, you're not fit if you're looking back. Remember Lot's wife? She looked back. She's turned into a pillar of salt. I'm going to give you this. Kayla's going to come on to the piano. Tonight I'll go to Hebrews and we'll get into that. We're 10 minutes past. Kayla's coming to the piano. 
Let me give you this in Proverbs 29 and 18. If you're writing, write this down. I'm going to quote it. I got it wrote down. Proverbs 29 and 18. Where there is no vision, the people perish. I said, where there is no vision, the people perish. You know what it's like for some of the old timers? I talk to them so many times. They call. The messages are unbelievable. They've, come, they've sent them from Ohio. They've sent them from Texas. They've come from Florida. From all over. And they're faithful to their church. But they're sitting in the church. And they're absolutely starving to death. You know what a sad time that is? You know how much sadder it's going to be in another 20 years? I have never seen such a famine for the Word of God. I've never been so amazed at people that are just so turned on by our preaching here. And, I've, and, and my heart was this. You ought to be able to turn on that television. Or you ought to be able to turn on Facebook. Or you ought to be able to turn on YouTube and find it anywhere. But they're saying it's not there. Without a vision, the people perish. You have to herd goats and cattle. Sheep have to be challenged. I'm challenging you to look beyond and see something today that's a whole lot bigger than you. If you can just catch a glimpse of it. You see, Paul said there wouldn't be one foundation, that's Christ. But he said to take heed how you build upon that foundation. I'm afraid that a lot of people have built in the time that I've lived, they've built upon that foundation, wood, hay, and stubble, and it's going to be revealed by fire one day. It's going to be tried by the very presence of God Himself, and it'll all be burned up, and they will suffer loss. But upon this foundation... What about catching a glimpse of the rubies? What about catching a glimpse of the precious stones? What about catching a glimpse of the precious gold that's going to be tried in the fire and refined in that day? See, that's the work of God. That's the ministry. That's carrying, being pregnant. Some of you mothers know what I'm talking about. I don't even fully understand what I'm talking about. I just watched my wife do it three times. But it's a, it, 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 it's a supernatural thing for my wife to have been pregnant. And carrying that for nine months. And now she's birthed them three little blessings that we've got. What about being pregnant with a move of God? What about hungering and thirsting for righteousness once again in the land? What about getting up and doing something about it? What about looking around like the lepers did outside the gate over there and say, You know... <laughs> If we sit right here, we're going to die. There's four of them sitting there. Uh, they, 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 uh, another, uh, a whole other army had come and cut off the food supply in that land. And they sat outside the gate starving to death and said, You know what? If we go in the gates, we're going to die. But if we sit right here, we're going to die. We go fall into the hand of the enemy, we might die. But you know what? We're going to get up and do something about it. And they got up and done something about it. And you, you know the story of what God done. Amen. It scared those people to death. He thought there's great big armies coming after him. God magnified the sound of their feet. God done something supernatural because four lepers, it's worth nothing, got up and said, You know what? I'm just not going to sit here and die. By the grace of God goeth I. I hope today, amen, that in some way the Holy Ghost of God will birth a vision in you that we don't perish. That we'll catch a hold of something a whole lot bigger than us. That we'll realize we're a part today of something that's so much bigger than you and I. I told my wife, I want to encourage you. I told her this in my heart. If I didn't believe this, folks, I love to fish. I'd be a fishing somewhere today, amen. If I didn't believe this, I'd be out of here, amen. But I believe this with all of my heart. I told my wife driving in the yard the other day, we're going up the driveway. I said, you know, I said, our church is small and we're insignificant. I, I said, but deep in my heart of hearts, I said, I know that what we're doing right now and what we're handling is so much more a bigger deal than what we can understand in this lifetime. This is going to be a big deal when we step out of this body and we meet Him face to face. What are we doing with the time that He's given us? Have we given ourselves to any kind of prayer whatsoever? Have we tried to press in? Have we even given any thought to moving beyond ourselves? Amen. 
This altar is open if you want to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I give you all the praise. I give you all the glory. And God, I'm asking you this day, Lord, that you'll touch. I'm asking you, God, that you'll birth a move of God in the hearts of these people today. I'm asking you, Father, that you'll touch our hearts like it's never been touched. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that this flame, God, that it'll burn hot. I pray, God, that you'll touch it, God, that you'll ignite the flames of revival in our souls. Father, I pray, God, that you'll do it for your glory. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, you'll help us this day to look beyond ourselves, to look beyond our feelings, look beyond our own thoughts, and let us, God, see this kingdom of God like we've never seen it before. God, help us this day to move beyond ourselves and to press in in the name of Jesus. Lord, we need your help. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, you'll touch what's been said here today and ignite a raging fire in our hearts. And we may come after you, Lord, like we've never come after you before. And we'll give you all the praise for it. In Jesus' name.